Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and we are taking a different change of pace here with a game by the MIT Games Lab. This is a slower speed of light, and I think it'll be interesting to you guys because it exhibits a number of things which are normally out of uh, the scope of human experience. Let's uh, play this and we'll talk about what's going on. I'm sure the title gives a lot of it away, but once upon a time in a quiet village, there was a little child. Sadly, the little child fell into death's icy grip far too soon. The little child's spirit began the journey to become one with the light. But the speed of light was too fast for the small and clumsy little spirit. Luckily, the spirit world is full of magical orbs that slow down light. Collect orbs to slow down light to walking speed so that you can finally move on. And okay, so you can compare your speed against the speed of light. And uh, there's a gauge at the bottom of the screen which lets you uh, view Doppler shift and standard controls and all that. So yeah, the idea is, this is actually not so much a game as it is a demo for MIT's um, relativistic game engine where the speed of light uh, matters a great deal. Now, this, there are a number of effects that happen and the first one is perhaps very subtle at this speed. You can see the colors change slightly due to Doppler shift. And as you're going towards something, they become more blue. And as you're traveling away from them, they become red. And this is actually visible in the bottom. You see the color spectrum changes so that the, the color spectrum the game uses extends uh, across the visuals that you're able to see. So I'm just gonna fly along this. It's kinda got a lot of inertia and that in itself makes things hard. But as you really start to uh, slow down the speed of light, the, the game starts to feel weirder. Um, as we'll get faster, what you'll start to see is things like the spotlight effect where one side of the screen, you see how I'm moving left and right? One side starts to be brighter because there are, is more photons coming in that direction. Um, this is, it's not just blue shift and red shift. You can see the red shift is much more enhanced now and the blue shift is much stronger as well. But uh, also simply because you're going forwards at great speed, you start to encounter more photons. So the actual flux starts to brighten as well. Now, um, what we'll also see as we get faster, or as light slows down, let's see, because we're not really getting faster. What's happening is the speed of light slows down. What starts to happen is the, the universe starts to take longer to respond to us. And that means that it's almost like getting drunk uh, or taking some sort of a hallucinogen. Let's, let, I mean, let's face it, with these colors, you know, you might as well be taking some sort of psychoactive substance. Look at that red shift really kicking in now. You see that as we're reversing, the, the infrared becomes much more pronounced. So, yeah, what happens is as you start to move really fast, <laughs> oh, pardon me. What happens as you start to move really fast is the the landscape starts to lag behind because it takes time for the light to reach your eyes. So you start aiming for a door or something or a gap in the landscape. And then when you actually arrive at it at near light speed, you realize that uh, it's not where it was. The moving very fast distorts the geometry in front of you. So things that things are you think are straight ahead of you aren't actually straight ahead of you anymore because they're being deflected through the velocity of light. So if I if I just come to a stop here, well, wow, come to a stop, and I go left and right, you see how the thing's moving. I'm not I'm not turning the mouse. I that distortion is entirely due to what's called uh, aberration. That means as I'm moving sideways, the photons are arriving at the sensor uh, at an angle, which means that the camera, the, the object looks like it's displaced. And this can become really hard, make it really hard to get through gates and stuff, uh, or you can bump into things all the time. 
as you see, uh, I'm up to like 70 odd orbs and they're, it's really started to become weird. <laughs> oh look, and, and going in reverse, it, it practically makes the thing black. I'm not sure if they actually increase the inertia, but it certainly feels that way. Now, of course, this is just a demo for the game engine. It's really just one level. I have often said in the past that I would love like a proper relativistic uh, shooter. Something where you fly spaceships around at near light speed or even slightly beyond light speed. I would love a space combat game where you can literally pull off what's called, what in Star Trek is the Picard maneuver. That's where you essentially fly in at a sublight speed and uh, then you turn around quickly and zip off somewhere else at warp speed and then come in from another vector at near light speed. And so the guy, because he's only seeing sensors at the speed of light, he sees two images coming in and he doesn't know which one it is is going to really attack him until the until the one the, the fake one turns around. But yeah, it'd be kind of a cool prospect. Whoa! Yeah, re reversing now, you see the the distortion is really quite bizarre. I think the orbs are affected slightly differently. Um, also, yeah, you can really see the the mo the distortion. Uh, things are starting to bend because of the speed. I'm up to like almost a hundred. Whoa! <laughs> uh oh! Everything is evaporating. Oh my goodness, where is that? I'm obviously not playing this particularly well. I'm, I'm mostly trying to discuss the amazingness of this game engine. Obviously, it, it's not, it doesn't entirely account for every uh, factor in, that changing the speed of light would uh, introduce. If you change the speed of light, then the fine structure constant is dependent on this. So the fine structure constant is the ratio of a, a bunch of very important parameters. And if the fine structure constant changes, then uh, things like the fundamental forces of nature break up. Um, the, so if the fine structure changes by more than 4%, nuclear fusion doesn't work, so life can't exist in the galaxy. The universe, or the universe, and the universe is really sensitive to the fine structure constant. And uh, it comes down to people have, people explain this through the anthropic principle and other suggestions. Um, but it's one of the great mysteries of the world uh, or the universe as to why the universe has formed in a way which makes light, uh, life possible. If you change the fundamental parameters like the speed of light by too much, then it's entirely possible you end up with a universe where life doesn't exist or it collapses instantly back in on itself or it just evaporates into a giant cloud of uh, particles which never coalesce into anything where life can exist. So, you know, changing changing the speed of light on this scale is mostly a macroscopic thing. It's not, um, it, it's not, they're obviously not modeling the, the universe dissolving into fundamental particles because the speed of light gets too low. But uh, it's a really cool, interesting demo to play around with and I mean, it is pretty on the eyes. It is art it is artistic. It sounds wonderful. Uh, don't do it when you are, you know, not in a straight frame of mind because it really does mess with your mind a lot. Uh, I love it. And you know, it's totally free to download. Go and get it from a slower speed of light. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.